Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's get a better understanding of a source-free RCL circuit by doing some examples. And let's start with a simple example. Here we have a circuit with a 40 ohm resistor, a 4 Henry inductor, and a 1 quarter ferret capacitor. And they want us to find the characteristic roots, the natural frequency, and we need to determine the type of damping we have in the circuit. Well, the best thing to do always is to find the damping factor and the natural frequency. So let's start with that. So the damping factor, by definition, is equal to R divided by 2L. So in this case, R is 40 and L is equal to 4. So that would be equal to 40 over 8, which is equal to 5. And the natural frequency, that is equal to 1 over the square root of L times C, which is equal to 1 over the square root of 4 times a quarter, which of course is equal to 1 over the square root of 1, which is simply equal to 1. And now we can determine whether or not there is critical damping, over damping, or under damping by comparing those two to one another. So let's find the difference between the damping factor, let's subtract from that the natural frequency. So in this case, that is 5 minus 1, which is 4. Since it's positive, that means it's overdamped. Another way of looking at that is to realize that if the damping factor is greater than omega sub naught, that also indicates overdamping. In this case, 5 is greater than 1, so we know that, yes, there's overdamped. And I think I forgot something, damped. I forgot an M. There we go. That looks a little bit better. All right. So now we know it's an overdamped case. Now let's find omega sub naught. Well, we found it. It's equal to 1, but let's put some units to that. So we see that omega sub, sub naught, which means the natural frequency, is equal to 1, and the unit for that would be radians per second. So that is the proper unit for the natural frequency. And finally, we need to find the characteristic roots. Now we know that the roots, S1 and S2, S1 and S2 could be found by taking the minus, that would be R divided by 2L, plus or minus the square root of the quantity R over 2L squared minus omega sub naught squared. Of course, instead of writing omega sub naught, I could have written the following, I could have written 1 over LC, and then we can replace by that by saying this is equal to minus the damping factor plus or minus the square root of the damping factor squared minus the natural frequency squared. And this is the square root symbol right there. All right. Those are the characteristic roots. So if we now plug in the values for that, so we can say that S1 is equal to minus the damping factor, which is 5, and that would be plus the square root of 5 squared minus the natural frequency, which is 1 squared, which is equal to minus 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 minus 1, which is 24. And it's not plus or minus, it's only the plus case. And let me find a calculator here. So we take 20, oop, 24, take the square root, add that to negative 5, minus 5 equals, and we get minus 0 0.101. So this is equal to minus 0 0.101, so that would be the first characteristic root, and then trying for the second one, S2 would be equal to minus 5 minus the square root of 5 squared minus 1 squared, which is equal to minus 5 minus the square root of 25 minus 1, so this is equal to, so we have 24, take the square root, and subtract 5 from that, so we get minus 9.899, minus 9, 9.899, which is the second char characteristic root, which is, of course, what we're going to use to solve the equation. Turns out that if we want to follow, solve the equation, we get the current as a function of time, which is equal to A1. We would have to determine the value of that, times e to the st and s1t, plus a2 e to the s2t. And so what we've done here is we found the two characteristic roots, s1 and s2, being minus 0.101 and minus 9.899. And then all we had left to do to find the full equation for the current would be to use the initial conditions to find the two constants a1 and a2. But in this case, they didn't ask us to solve it. 
we've gone far enough, and that's how we find the natural frequency, the damping factor, what kind of damping we're dealing with here, and the two characteristic roots. And that is how it's done.